if there's one piece of equipment that I absolutely swear by, it has to be this, a Wacom tablet. Now recently I did a video on Capture One. One of the questions that was put into the comment field below the video was, how do I set up my Wacom tablet? Do I use a Wacom tablet? Because obviously the viewer had seen me gesticulating with the Wacom pen. Before we dive into that though, I need to have a quick word around the Wacom tablet itself. Time and time again, I meet photographers who say they've got this fancy thing called tablet and it's sitting there in their cupboard gathering dust. In fact, that's exactly what happened with this particular one. I bought it secondhand when a newer model of the Wacom Intuos Pro died on us in the studio. Uh, its motherboard went. I needed to get another one fast and promptly and I basically replaced it with the slightly older version of the Wacom Intuos Pro. That's the thing about these tablets. You can use an old tech tablet all the way through. So this one is probably eight, nine years old. Uh, the one that my wife uses in the studio is my old one of the same generation as this and I've been using that one or at least we've been using that in the studio for the last 10 years basically. This is particularly the case if you're a photographer and not actually doing this for drawing where the whole pressure and the sensitivity is so much more important. With Photoshop and Capture and Luminar or any of the other software packages that you're going to use for editing photographs or video for that matter, the sensitivity isn't as important. So your Wacom tablet, once you invest in it, you're going to use it for years and years and years. Why on earth are there so many of these gathering dust in photographers' cupboards? And it comes down to not putting enough effort into actually getting used to using the Wacom tablet in the first place. If you're going to use one of these, I absolutely recommend that you do away with the mouse for a week at the minimum, just to be able to get used to the concept of using the pen instead of a mouse to be able to use your cursor on the screen. In fact, the Wacom tablet has become such an important part of my workflow and the way that I edit my images that I even went and bought myself another one. This is the Wacom Intuos Pen and Touch. It fits in next to my MacBook Air and it goes with me wherever I travel. So I also have a Wacom when I am out in the field or running a workshop with Nature's Light and I just, I've gotten to the point where I actually can't work without a Wacom tablet or a tablet of some kind. I'm not going to go into a whole video on how you troubleshoot getting your Wacom started in the first place. It's actually fairly easy and there is a wealth of information on the internet on how to actually get your Wacom working in the first place. The most critical things though, and it's the, the Basically, the major troubleshooting is that there are sometimes a couple of aspects inside your preferences or your security and privacy settings on your computer that stop the Wacom from working. So if your Wacom is not working and you've downloaded it with the most current software, and that's important, make sure that you've downloaded the software and then you can plug and play basically. What you would do is you go into your basic system settings and you want to make sure that you have gone through to go through to privacy and security. And under that, you will see that you've got a couple of places that you just need to make sure that the Wacom driver is ticked on. The first place you're going to look at is under automation and you'll see you've got Wacom tablet driver. Just make sure that it is switched on. If you're still having troubles, you can always potentially switch off everything, then switch them on again just to make sure that it's working. Input monitoring, you'll also find it. Wacom tablet driver, make sure that that is clicked on and you will have to put in a password when you do do this, which is also super important. So we're going to switch that on, quit and reopen. There we go. That's great. And very important, you have to make sure that accessibility also has Wacom tablet driver switched on. Okay, once those are switched on, then there's a good chance that there is not going to be any more troubleshooting problems with your Wacom tablet. The bit that ten people tend to get confused by is they're used to using a mouse. So they're not quite sure how the Wacom tablet actually works in terms of using it as a mouse. The basic idea is that as long as your pen is hovering over the board or the tablet, it's going to follow along like it would a mouse. When you touch the screen, it's going to act like a click of the mouse. And that's basically the gist behind it. If you're wanting to click and drag, you're holding the pen to the tablet and you are dragging. So if I go through to Photoshop, you will see that I can quickly... There you go. So it's nice and easy. It's basically like drawing. Some people have also complained before that it doesn't really feel like you're drawing on a piece of paper, but there's a very easy fix to that. The more modern Intuos Pros, 
can have the actual tablet cover replaced with something that has more friction on it or you just need to buy the right nibs. When you buy your tablet it comes with a series of nibs and one of those nibs actually feels a little bit like you're using a pencil on paper. For the most part though once you get used to your Wacom tablet you're not actually going to notice that and it's not so much of a problem. As I said the biggest issue is just getting used to using it in the first place. Okay so which brings me to how do I set up my tablet itself. When you look at your at an Intuos Pro particularly the medium which is the one that I highly recommend for any photographers you'll see on the left hand side of your tablet pad that you have got eight buttons and a central button with a wheel around it or at least a touch wheel these can all be programmed and this is where the importance lies in being able to actually set up your Wacom properly so that it minimizes the amount of time that you've got your hands going all over the place in trying to control Photoshop or Capture One or any of the other programs that you happen to be using. So I have a particular set of buttons that I have programmed my Wacom with. Most important are the ones that are going to be closest to you when you're working and those are the four bottom buttons. I've programmed them such that it is shift at the top option below that, command below that, and then spacebar at the very bottom. And you'll see there's even little indentations on some of them so that you can identify the buttons by feel. These are super important buttons for when you're working in Photoshop or any of the other photo editing softwares because you are using them all the time. The four buttons at the top are the buttons that you are less likely to need to access. I have mine programmed so that the top is touch on and off because these are touch pads as well. So if I hit touch on and off you'll see it indicates on the screen touch on and off and it means that I can now use my finger. I personally don't like this particular usage of the pad. I find that if I've got touch switched on it can sometimes interfere with when I'm using the pen. So most of the time I actually leave it off. The only time I ever do use touch is potentially if I'm going through files and I'm using it almost like I would be using a touchpad on a Mac laptop instead. Okay, so for the most part I leave mine switched to touch off. The button below that I have got set to my actual settings button because it's useful to be able to jump in and out. When you hit it you see on your screen a quick menu basically of the options on your Wacom tablet itself. So you can actually see on the screen at the moment with what all my buttons are programmed as and if I want to get into the preferences all I do is I click on the preference button and it'll bring me up to the preferences on the actual computer itself where you can further customize what your Wacom tablet is going to do for you. The button below preferences I have as precision mode. When you click precision mode you get a very small square inside your screen which is now going to be mapped to the entire size of your pad itself which means that you've got much more precise control over how you're going to use your pen. For the most part I hardly ever use this but I have used it in the past when I'm doing for instance uh, Bezier work or deep etching work on product photography for clients and if I've got a very very fine detailed object that I need to work on I do sometimes find that it's useful being able to use the precision tool but for the most part that usually stays off. Then below that, it, this is actually set up in the latest software with Wacom as a default, but you can also change this if you want to, and I have this set to a zoom button. So as long as I'm pressing this button, if I then use my pen, I can zoom in and out onto an image. Those are your buttons. If I'm using a laptop on the other hand, I don't worry about the buttons. So although the Wacom Intuos Pen and & Touch does have four control buttons I don't even know what they are because I never use them rather I just have the tablet and because it is a laptop everything is up close together so I'm not actually saving any time by programming my buttons because I can just use the keyboard with my left hand and then my right hand uses the pen then you have your magic wheel which is actually a really really cool tool over here because it allows you to change the size of certain things at, with, with its scroll function basically. So I have mine set up so that it has four modes inside it and I'm only really using three modes. The first mode I always have set to brush size. So basically if I have a brush inside you will see that as I scroll clockwise the brush gets bigger, as I scroll counterclockwise it gets smaller and it is the same in Photoshop. So you'll see inside Photoshop at the moment if I have my brush settings over here as I as I open up the circle gets bigger and smaller and that is my brush. Nice and easy. 
But what I have also set inside my controls over here is that if I click the button, I can change to a different mode. And this now means it goes through to scroll. Now scroll will work in Capture One as a zoom control, so I can actually zoom in. And then I can use my space button to be able to drag about inside the image and see what I'm doing. If I'm on any of the other scrollable panels, it means that as I use my scroll, I will go up and down. So right now I'm scrolling through my images. If I want to go to my controls on the other side, I can scroll down through them as well. So that's a very useful tool. If I'm in Photoshop though, on the other hand, and I have multiple layers, there we go, I can also click this button once more in the center of my magic wheel, and now I will have cycle layers. And that means that I can jump between layers. So if I have a whole bunch of layers and I'm working between those layers, I can jump between them using the cycle pad rather than going into the layers and, and clicking and being able to access them that way. So it speeds up the amount of time that I'm going to be using in front of the computer by simply freeing up the keyboard itself and allowing me direct access through the Wacom tablet itself. Last, we get to our pen, which is an all important tool. Now, the pen itself has got a button on it, and this is on all of the actual Wacom tablets. You have two buttons, essentially, a forward button and a back button. I have set my forward button so that that means right click. So instead of having to click on somewhere else on the actual pad or by holding a button, I'll get my alternative menu up. Or if I'm wanting to right click, for instance, on a screen, so I want to see what's in my hard drive, right click and there you go. And that's just by using the forward button. The back button is also super important. And what I've done is I've set that to Command Z or Undo. So it means that if I'm working in Photoshop or inside Capture One or any of those controls where Undo is Command Z. So if I draw inside here and I want to undo it, now all I do is I press the button and it goes away. So it saves you time from having to work on your keyboard. The keyboard is always close by for other shortcut access keys, but for the most part, you can do a huge amount of work just using your tablet in front of you. So those are the basic settings that I have. You do, of course, still have a eraser button on your pen itself as well. I personally don't actually use it that much. I used to have it set to erase, but I find that it's actually just easier to use a shortcut button on the keyboard and then use the actual pen as normal because it gives you more access to some of the other controls. Whereas if you're using the erase tool, you'll find that potentially the brush size doesn't work or the scroll button doesn't work. So I just ignore the erase button for the most part. And for that matter, you'll find that when you use the pen from the Intuos Pen and Touch, there is no erase button. You literally just have the nib at the front of your pen. The last thing that we need to look at is also some of the settings behind how the pen and the pad actually interact with the computer. I'm going to hit my settings button once more and we're going to go into pen preferences and you will see that you can also change the tip feel and the speed and the double clicking speed when you're using it as well as the sensitivity. My sensitivity with tilt is set to normal. That is, set, is essentially how much the pen is tilted when you are drawing. Again, I'm not using it to draw, I'm using it for Photoshop. So I don't really need to worry about the tilt. If you are doing, trying to emulate a watercolor kind of pen stroke or brush stroke or a lead pencil, then you might worry about tilt, for instance. Tip feel as well, I've just left it between soft and firm, and it's the same with the double click you might find that your mileage varies based on the kind of usage that you're going to be using your Wacom tablet for. More important, I feel, is actually going into the functions themselves. Now, over here, you will see that, for instance, if I go to my touch ring over here, you'll see that I have set my scroll to fast. And in fact, you can go even faster. Just to give you an indication, if I have it set to very fast, and then I go through to my Capture One, for instance, over here, you might find that it just scrolls way too fast in and out. Let's go across over here. So fast, actually fast is good over here. This, this works nicely. I can scroll down through my images relatively quickly. But if I were to go into my preference, let's just jump into Express Key Preferences again. And let's say I set that down to slow. We're gonna go back here. 
Now you'll see that I'm going to be using my scroll a lot to be able to go anywhere. I personally prefer speeding up the scroll effect when I'm using these particular tools. Cycling through layers though on the other hand it's nicer to have it a bit slower because if you've got a whole bunch of layers and you touch your scroll wheel you might find suddenly you're at the top of the layer stack instead of at the bottom of the layer stack. So it makes sense to slow that down. You'll feel how you prefer to set up the actual setting itself. So I do recommend that um, you play with this a little bit before you actually get used to it. You can also map out the pad as well by going into your grip pen and looking at the right hand side. Now the mapping is how you actually use the screen based on the actual pad. I have it set such that I have the full screen on my actual tablet itself. I find that that works quite nicely and it also effectively means that I'm not looking at my screen. And that's the hardest part of getting used to using a Wacom tablet, is understanding that you're not looking at the tablet, you're looking at the screen. And it's just that disjunct between your hand moving over the tablet and your eye viewing the screen. Once you get used to it though, it becomes an inseparable part of how you work on your images in Photoshop. Right, so I hope that's useful. This is just the way that I've set up my Wacom tablet. If you have one and you find that you don't use your Wacom tablet, basically I just urge you to give it a try for a week. Put aside your mouse or your other trackpad that you might have in use and try the Wacom tablet for a week. Just dedicate yourself to it. There's a good chance that after that, you'll probably find you'll never be able to work without it again. And for the most part, if you're doing things like product photography and a lot of deep etching work, it will minimize the chances of carpal tunnel syndrome, which is a real thing if you're actually trying to do the pen tool using a mouse, which is a nightmare beyond belief. Trust me, I know, I've been there, it hurts. The Wacom tablet is by far the easiest, fastest way to be able to edit on screen because it is ergonomically far more comfortable and just far more intuitive to use once you break through the whole mental block of the tablet and the screen being linked to it to each other. Right, I hope you found this useful. Thanks very much for watching. If you do have any questions, remember to pop them in the comment section down below. If you've enjoyed the video, please don't forget to pop a like and a subscribe inside the blocks. That's what keeps me going over here. Uh, and hopefully I'll see you again on the next one. Thanks again for watching and cheers.